Oh, it's just about to happen. <laughs> All right, here we go. So my name is Stephen. Hey, Janie, how you doing? Good to see you. So my name is Stephen Kuhn. Um, I'm 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 a, a American military veteran living in Europe and in Turkey. So right now I'm in Turkey. I live between Turkey and Hungary um, with my um, Ukrainian wife that lives in Turkey. So uh, that's that's my story. I come from a long background of military members. So I joined right out of high school and um, went to uh, boot camp, and then I ended up in Germany. So I was in Germany for seven years as a soldier, and I went to Iraq from there for the first Gulf War. And um, I got out, and I stayed in Europe when I got out, and that was 32 years ago. So I've been in ten. I've lived in ten countries for the last 32 years, and I know it sounds like a lot of moves, and it was. And I've worked in more, so pretty busy. And what that gave me was insight to, I mean, just to give you a rundown, so you understand where I'm coming from here. So I worked for Mick Jagger, Olivia Newton-John, Andrea Bocelli. European Parliament, German Parliament, Croatian Parliament. I spoke in front of all those. I worked with royals. I worked for royals. Um, I um, I worked for a PLC uh, as a director of Europe, um, a British PLC, a South African PLC, an American da NASDAQ company. And I gained all this experience, right? And I was always self-employed, by the way. So I was always a self-employed advisor. So for 25 plus years, that's what I've been doing. And it always, it was, it was this endless race for the next client, right? So you're like, man, I need another client. This guy's ending or this contract's ending. And it was, it's just endless 25 years. And then one time I had a client, uh, a potential client. They said, look, Steve, we'd love to work with you. You have everything we need, but we can't afford you. And I was like, I actually like these people. I want to, I want to work with them, but I don't want to go cheaper. So I said, well, how about this? How about if I reduce my fee and you give me some equity? And he was like, why would I do that? And I said, well, then I'm vested in your company, aren't I? I'm going to give, I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to give you the full, full 100% anyway, but this will guarantee longevity, right? And he's like, you're right. That's not bad. Boom. I did my first deal with equity. So he was paying me a monthly retainer to consult and advise him and gave me equity. And what that did for me was, is it allowed me to literally measure the value of the company at that moment and then see where I could bring it through my activities when I exited, which I always exit after three years, it's in, it's in the agreement that you're going to receive at the end of this, right? So I always exit after three years, like that's guaranteed. It's in the it's in the agreement. I went out, right? After three years, I have, I have an option to stay in, but you, you actually want to exit and create a capital event in three years. So if you do this for a couple of years, you're going to have every year, you're going to have a couple of exits. And so instead of chasing customers all the time or clients all the time, you end up building wealth the same way. And it's, it's pretty amazing that I fell on top of this by mistake, right? But, and I started doing it. And then I, um, I said, man, maybe I should learn some more about this. And so I took a course in mergers and acquisitions and I realized there's a similar deal there, but they weren't doing what I was doing. So I brought that into this mergers and acquisitions group of 2000 professionals. And now I speak all over the world on this exact subject. So I spoke in the UK last year, in Boston last year, I was invited to Phuket. Didn't go; it's too too long of a flight, like sixteen hours. I'm not just not my deal, even in business class. And now I'm going to do Dubai in my, in May, and they're all stages for mergers and acquisitions. And I'm not talking about mergers and acquisitions. I'm only talking about equity and companies. And so, if you if you grasp this, what it is that you're about to learn, it's going to change your life. Because if you have a service, let's say you're a marketing company or you're wh whatever you are. You have a service and someone can't afford your service. That's the first step to say, all right, let me reduce it a little bit. And you give me some equity, 5%, 10%. I had a, I had a woman one time in Australia, had a gym. And she said, man, I need to, uh, you know, turn this around. Maybe I'll sell it. Maybe I won't. But, you know, how is this going to work? And I laid into her, and I'll teach you how to do this in a second. I laid into her about the results that she could get through working with me. No, I wasn't selling her anything. I was just telling her my, you know, what, what I could do for her. And then I said, she goes, well, how does this work? I, I really want to work with you. And I said, well, um, I usually take a fee. Um, if I'm introducing you to somebody, I'll take an upfront fee, but I'm not. So I, I take a retainer and then I take uh, equity in the company. And she said, okay, what do you charge? And I said at the time, I don't know, it was 5K a month or something. I think it was 5K a month euros, which is probably six, 7,000 Australian dollars. And I'll take 10% equity. And she said, well, I can't afford 5,000. You got to realize this. She said, I can't afford 5,000. How about if I pay you 3,500 and give you 30% equity, right? So you see sometimes 
our perception is, man, I'm asking for 10%. And here she is throwing 30% at me, right? Throwing 30% at me because she saw the value in what I was able to do for her. And what's, what's the value in something like that? They know that if I have equity in their company, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be super vested in that company. So what was the outcome of that? The outcome of that was, as I told her, I said, that's crazy. Don't ever give away 30% equity. And she said, what? You're turning down equity? I said, yeah, I'll do it for the three, five. Give me 15%. I'm happy with that. What do you think that did for our relationship from then on? You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't grab it all. You know, I didn't grab it. I was like, Hey, you know, I'm here. And also I was a little selfish because if you think about it, if I'd have taken 30% equity, then I would have had to done that much more work in order to get the valuation that she wanted after I exited. Right. So I had to, had to do more work for myself to get what she wanted. So long story. Anyway, it, it turned out really cool. We're, we're actually good friends. She came and joined me in, an, in another project. And that's the beauty of this. Hey, Rodney, that's the beauty of this whole thing that we're talking about here is that you end up creating legacy for other people. You create a legacy for yourself, wealth for yourself, or at least capital events, which is an exit when you get a chunk of money, there's a saying that we have in an m a space, you don't make money by running a company, you, get, you make money when you sell a company. Right? That's where the money comes in. You, you get a debt. I mean, when you when you sell a company, you have, of course, capital gains tax. But if you invest that into real estate, and you have any assets like that, then you can forego all that stuff. There's a, there's a lot of ways to do that. We won't get into that today. But what I want to talk about today, and like I said, this is just me talking to you. You're sitting in my living room right now in Turkey. Welcome. I would give you a Turkish chai, but I don't have any right now. And we're just talking, right? So I want to tell you, I want to tell you and let you know how to acquire equity in a company with no money down and just get paid for it, right? This is literally a peek behind the curtain. This is usually reserved for those who even know in the mergers and acquisitions industry, but most of them don't know from my experience. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing on stage talking about it every two or three months in these specific industries. First thing I, I want to say is that everything that I speak about here, I have personally done. There's zero theory in anything that I'm talking about here, or I wouldn't talk about it. Applied knowledge is real knowledge, right? Learned theory is knowledge sitting up here somewhere that has no application. So I apply the knowledge, then I can teach it. If I don't apply it, I don't teach it. So, of course, I've taken classes and books and I've read books and courses and all that kind of stuff. And I've failed uh, quite a few times. I've even had companies where they paid me a little bit, gave me a lot of equity, and then they, and they, they went under. They weren't worth anything, right? They didn't go under, but they, they weren't worth anything. So I learned my lesson. Where do you take equity? Where don't you take equity? Where do you even waste your time with a company or not, right? So in the end, I was able to gain equity in 22 companies in about a two and a half year period, three years, right? And I got paid for every single one. And I just want to show you how you can do the same thing, regardless of your knowledge, your service, what you offer, or your talents. You don't need to have any of that stuff. And if, if you don't believe this can be a reality to you, I just ask you to remain open for the possibility for the next hour or so, wherever long it's going to take. And you're going to see the world in a whole different way. I promise you that, right? And this could actually be the one thing that changes your wealth forever, if you get this right. You know, I have a friend, he, he's actually a founder of one of these courses and groups. He owns 200 companies. I don't even think he went to college, this guy. He exited his last company. You ready for this? $189 million. And this is a guy who cusses every second word, right? Just bought a super yacht himself um, because he needs a tax write-off, right? Uh, and and he's, he did it exactly like this and then added on the mergers and acquisition space. And so like he didn't have the college degree and the corporate structure of the corporate career on none of that stuff. An entrepreneur will always out earn the structured world. It just seems to be that way. So anyway, so what, what's going to happen today? You're going to learn how to prepare to ask for equity and get paid for it. And then I'm going to show you when to ask for equity and how to ensure that they say yes. And then of course, how to structure the agreement on just one page. And that's the key is the agreement on one page, because most of you probably think if I'm going to get equity in a company, I need to get a lawyer involved. Well, you do, but it's their lawyer. Why should you pay a lawyer, right? You're, you're providing the service. They need to provide the lawyer, but the lawyer needs a framework on which to go by. And that's your one page agreement. So not only do you get paid, you get equity. You also don't have to pay for a lawyer because they do it. They prepare the equity share agreement. 
based upon the agreement that I'm going to give you today or two agreements that I'm going to give you today. Hmm. And the agreement, some might say, oh, it's got to be legally binding. It's, it's an agreement. It doesn't say contract or, you know, whatever. It's an, it's an agreement. And the reason you want the agreement on one page, because A, they can, they'll be excited for what I'm about to tell you. They'll be excited about it. And then they'll, be, they'll just sign it and they can pay you and get you started immediately. And why is that important? Because if you wait for a lawyer, it's going to take weeks. They're going to get sidetracked. You're going to get sidetracked. You're going to say, ah, they don't care anymore. They're going to say, ah, he doesn't care anymore. Next thing you know, you don't have anything. Right. So it's, it's important that we get all this in with momentum. But before that happens, you have to focus on how to ask for the equity and get paid for it. Like, how? How do I do that? But you, you, right now, you're, you, you might be thinking, like, I mean, I can't do this. I, I don't know what to do if I own equity. What, what would I do with my company if I own equity? Well, first of all, fears and thoughts put them to rest because you've never learned this anyway. You've never, you know, no, one's, no one teaches this. So it's something new and it can be intimidating if you think about it up here, but don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be difficult. You can be super successful, like I just mentioned, without, it, without even M&A knowledge at all, mergers and acquisitions knowledge at all. Just listen to what I'm saying, write it all down, take the, take the agreement. And because you're all on this call right now, you all get a call with me for 30 minutes. I can, uh, that's not a problem with me. Just book it with me over the email that you guys got this from. And just, um, you know, not book it, write me because I don't like using Calendly because it fills me up and I, I got to work too much so we'll do it that way and um, I would love to sit with you guys uh, maybe on a follow-up call as a group once you have your first deals or what's going on just let me know and there's ways to work with me on that uh, we can talk about that too so so how to ask equity and get paid for it well you don't ask right you don't ask for equity ever never go into a meeting with the outcome in mind only the intention of solving problems that they have. If you've read my book, Unleash Your Humble Alpha, you will know what you can't control in life. And that is the outcome. What can you control? That's the intention. What's your intention? My intention is to solve problems, add value, solve problems. So when you go into a meeting, you're meeting with anybody. And now remember, I'm not asking you to go out and find companies that need help. I'm, I'm asking you, what companies are you working with now? What clients do you have right now that want to renew their contract? What product or service do you have that is ongoing that they might want but can't afford? These are all ways just to talk to people. You don't need to go out and do lead generation. Just use the people you have in your industry already. And I'll teach, I'll talk to you more about that as well. So what service or product do you provide that can solve a problem that the client or customer has, right? Maybe you're a coach, you're an advisor, you're a consultant, a marketing agency owner, a PR agency owner, even an employee of a company that has a specific service then right now you're already prepared to own equity, right? Key is this, certainty in your abilities, right? Certainty in your abilities about doing this. That's how you get the discussions rolling. People don't buy what you're selling. They buy your certainty in what you're selling. They don't buy your service product. They buy you. They buy your certainty in your abilities and your abilities to, to deploy your genius and your activities in all areas or your, your talents in all areas. So when you go to these conversations, you simply listen. What are they actually saying? What, what are they actually saying to you? And then you answer only according to those discussions. No, nothing else. Don't bring your own stuff into it unless it's something personal that can gain more rapport with them, right? Forget the outcome. That's the key factor. Forget the outcome. Just a quick story here to give you an example. So I was on a call actually the day before yesterday, and it's with a British man who invited me in uh, because he was he hit a wall with this um, client that he's working with, and she's selling her um, marine supplies company in the UK. It's been around since 1948. Once like 4.5 million for it, right? And you're probably thinking 4.5 million. Who has that kind of money? It's got to be a big corporation. No, we're gonna we're gonna get it for no money down, right? That's our plan. That's a whole nother story, but. The basic is this, how do we get her to the point where she will say yes to a no money down deal? How is it even possible? Well, we need to find out who she is, what she wants, what her problems are, and what her challenges are. So he called me and he said, look, Steve, I've had one or two calls with her and she won't give me any information how much she wants, why she wants it, the background, none of this stuff. And can you help me? And I'm sort of known as the guy that talks to people, as you can probably notice. <laughs> and so... I jumped on the call 
and his jaw dropped to the ground because within minutes we were talking about where she went to high school and I mean, you name it, just the whole world. And she started offering up information that we weren't even asking. And he was just like, wow, man, how do you do that? I said, I just showed up and was really interested in who that person was as a human being, what her background was. It was an American woman who owns a British company. Uh, we talked about immigration issues with her and how difficult it was. And, you know, I went through the same thing in Europe and all these kind of things. So we had this commonality that we brought out. And now she's like, you guys are serious, aren't you? We don't know anything about her industry, zero, like nothing. But we know how to talk to her. And she's interested to sell to us now because she has more offers on the table. That's the first step to asking for equity. That's the very first step you show up wholly and fully for that person in front of you with no preconceived notions or cookie cutter solutions, focusing on the only thing that you can control, and that is your intention to add value by solving problems. You can't control the outcome anyway, so let it go, right? And you do that in any situation, whether you're selling, getting equity, with your kids, your wife, your husband, whatever it is, you do that, you create space, and you don't worry about the outcome, man, your life changes completely. It's, it, it really is amazing. And sometimes I catch myself not doing it and I see where the discussion's going and I immediately stop any, any uh, you know, calculations of an outcome specifically with my wife, right? Like that really works with a relationship. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't, if, if I'm trying to push you in a, in a direction immediately, uh, it, you, you'll feel the resistance. So you let go of that and then there's no more resistance and you find a natural path to where you want to go. So that... That's the, that's the first step, right? That's the first step is getting them into a place. And the key is here is that you have to be honestly, honestly interested in that person. If you're not interested in that person, then forget about it. Then don't even try. The, the, one of the things that a lot of people do is they get a deal and they think, okay, I have to do this deal. Like I'm stuck with, like, I'm not letting this guy have to die. This is my, no, right? If you're not flowing, if you're not feeling this, this drawl, if you're not interested in what they do, do and where they've been and who they are and what, why, how, and when, well, um, you're going to have a heck of a time because there's going to be no synergies there. So with the woman that we were talking to with the Marine company, um, you know, she offered up how much she wants for the company and how much she wants out of it net, which shows me she doesn't know how to get that net or she wouldn't have said that. So I know she needs help with the structuring of the deal afterwards. So what is she going to do with her money? Where is she going to put it? How is she going to, how is she going to get to a certain place? I don't know how to do that, but I know someone who does, right? And that brings us to the second step, right? And the second takeaway. And that is when to ask for equity and how to ensure that they say yes. And this, my friends, this is the magic of the entire thing. This right here will help you not only gain equity, but get higher fees, much higher fees. You can, you can sell your products longer, your services longer, you'll get booked for longer, uh, and you're gonna be well-known for someone who actually solves problems and not just talks about it, right? So here we go. This is the, the fine-tuned part of it all, and this is where the yes or the no will be cemented in place. Once you know their challenge or their problem, do you personally have a solution or know someone who can solve their problem, regardless if it's your industry or not? Like I said, I'm not in that industry of a Marine, but it doesn't matter. I know someone who is, and I introduced him yesterday. He owns a um, Marina in Vietnam. He's an American. Perfect. She's American. He's American. He's Vietnam. And because he's in Vietnam and does almost the same thing as she does, we've already talked about them coming together, open up a satellite office with him. He opened up a satellite office with her already. We've grown the company. We haven't even bought it yet. All right. So that's what I mean. Regardless of your industry or not, can you solve their problem or do you know someone who, who can solve their problem? And I'm going to give you the first tip right here. Ask for help every single time. If right now you go out tomorrow or the next day and you get someone who, who is from the underwater pipeline descaling industry <laughs> and you're like, I have no idea, what can you do right, to help them? Call around, make a post, or LinkedIn or whatever, or call me. right? Write me an email because I have to happen to know somebody who does that by the way. But all these different things is it doesn't mean you need to have a solution. You don't need to have a solution. You just need to know someone who does. As simple as that. Let's say you created space with them, right? Which is again, showing a polling fully for the person in front of you, no preconceived notions, cookie cutter solutions, and all that kind of stuff, right? And you have an existing client and, and they found and their challenge is that they need a marketing solution. 
and they need to generate more leads. So the problems are clear. They need marketing and they need leads, right? Sorry, distributors. They need distributors to sell their product once they market it, right? And they can't find any distributors. They don't know how to find distributors. Most people who have products that are new companies are one or two years old. They've been selling on their own on their website. And then they need to find distributors. They have no idea how to do that. So the solution is simple, right? If you're sitting in front of a client or a new client or a potential client, and you get all of their issues and their problems out of the way in plain view, and you recognize them and you can say, I see your two issues clearly. Give me a few days. I'm going to return with a solution for you. You're giving them certainty in your abilities. You're giving them certainty in a specific outcome, right? For them, not for you, but for them, that you will return with a solution, with a solution, not maybe whatever, but you will come with a solution. Then you pick up the phone, you start speaking with, speaking with people who can solve these problems. So let's give you an example. Say, for instance, you need that. You need the marketing and the, and the distributors. You call someone who has a marketing company, or you call me and ask me if I know anybody and let them know what the company needs. So they need six months of marketing, da, 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 explain what the company does. And if, you, if they can help, and if they can get, if they can help for real, then get an estimate on the cost, but more importantly, uh, get a quantifiable outcome. Like what can that marketing company bring to the table based on the information that you have for that company, right? What, it, what can they do? Let's say, um, Basically, we're saying how much re revenue on average can they generate on a monthly basis for 12 months for this company? Let's say they come back with a number, it's, it's 4K a month or 48K, right? Annually. Then you call and ask me, for instance, hey, uh, do you know any distributors for this product? Which I do, um, actually many, uh, for almost every product you can imagine. And you do the same thing. You ask if they can help, explain the situation, get the cost and the quantifiable outcome. And let's say they also say it's 48K a year that they can generate more. So you go back to your client, you say, hey, John, we discussed the two issues, marketing and distribution. I got a solution for each one. A marketing company has looked at your company and they can produce a minimum average of revenue of 4K per month. Then the distribution partner who I spoke to believes they can move 48K annually more of your product in the next 12 months. And that's a total uplift in the first year of 96K. How's that sound? So, what usually happens? Someone says, hey, Steve, you know, I'm Steve and I'm just calling call me Joe X, right? So Joe X advisor, this is my problem. This is what I'm looking for. And what do I do? I make an offer. Okay, I can solve your problem for this much money. Here's the, here's the agreement, right? Some people sign it, some people don't. But you're going on sort of on blind faith, aren't you? What I just did is I proved that I will work for this company. And I did it for a week for free. I didn't work a whole time a week. I just made a few phone calls. But I came back to them with a solution that was quantified. Now, someone's saying right now, well, you can't guarantee this 96K. Well, no, you can't. But I can guarantee I'm going to give you the contacts and I'm going to, I'm going to um, accompany you along the way so that it, we make sure it does happen. Certainty, once again, I'm gaining certainty from them in my abilities to deploy my genius and my talents in any given situation. Right? So they might ask you the price. Well, how much is it going to cost me? Because 96K is gross and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. But more than likely... They're focusing on, holy cow, I can make 96K more because it's exciting. It's exciting, right? You know, now comes the question, how do we move forward with this, Stephen? But before we do that, I want to tell you how this actually works. So as an example, a real life example. So I had a guy in Austria, a friend of mine, who said, Stephen, I have a friend who has a accessories company, weapons accessories company. I was like, weapons. No, no, just accessories. And, and I said, okay. He said, he wants to manufacture, he wants to sell to the American government. I was like, well, he needs a manufacturer and a distributor and a government contractor. Otherwise you can forget about it. And uh, he said, well, can you help him? I said, I don't know. Let me talk to him. So I talked to him on the phone. We hit it off. Of course. Um, I'm ex-military. He's ex-military, Austrian. I'm German. I speak German. So we're all good. Um, and he said, uh, we talked to him and I said, yeah, you need a distributor, a manufacturer, and their government contractor. He said, well, I have no idea how to do that. I'm, I'm Austrian. I don't know anything about America. So I, uh, I called my buddy, Mike, from the weapons industry. I swear this guy knows everybody um, in, every, in every country. And I said, this is what I'm looking for. Do you have contacts? 
So he himself said, I'll manufacture that. That's, that's an awesome product. I want that product. I said, all right, well, how much do you think you can sell? What's, what's it going to cost? And, you know, the whole works. Like, what's the cost for manufacturing? How many can you sell in the next, I don't know, three years or two years, whatever it was. And so he did some calculations. At the same time, he gave me the contacts for a distributor of the products. Did the same thing. What do you think you can sell over the next three years? And then I went to a government contracting agent that I know that came from the Air Force. And all he did for 20 years in the Air Force was allocate government monies to, to different contractors. So now he's a contractor on the other side doing the same thing for the contractors to get the money that he used to allocate, right? So there's no better person to do the government contracting than this guy, right? And so I talked to him. I said, what do you think? Can, can we get it in? He said, yeah, it's going to take about two years if we get it in. But if we get it in, this is a product that doesn't exist yet here. So I'm pretty sure we can do X, Y, and Z amount of revenue for this. Went back to Mike. Mike, I got the distribution and I got the government contracting. What's the manufacturing look like? And he said, well, it looks like this. We can probably bring in between this and this in the next you know, three years. That took me two and a half hours on the phone in total over a week. That's it. Right. So what do I have right now? I got ammunition, funny enough, uh, but, I, you know, weapons industry, no pun intended, but I have ammunition to go back into that meeting, don't I? I got, what's it going to cost? How much am I going to make? When do I get it in? How long is it going to take? I know all of this information and they may haven't even signed with me yet or paid me a dime. Why the heck would I do this? Because I'm different. Because I care. I really care about that person in front of me. And for me, it's a personal challenge. You think I can't solve your problem? Bring it. Right? Bring it. The harder it is for me to solve, the harder I'm going to work for it. And I don't have to say that. They feel it. They see it. Why? Because I'm certain of my abilities. I'm certain of deploying my genius, whatever that is. Not that I'm genius, but things that I know, right? I'm certain of myself. That's so key. If you want to check out my book, Unleash Humble Alpha, it's all about, it's, the whole thing is all about that, certainty. So I go back to his name is Didi, right? Didi, Dieter. His, name, his nickname is Didi. He's a German, uh, Austrian guy. I go back, hey, man. He's like, no, let's meet in person. I'm like, all right. So he came to Hungary where I was living at the time. And across the street from my house at the time, I had a restaurant. So I go to this restaurant and I meet him and my buddy who introduced me to him in the first place. And we're sitting there and he's all tough. And, you know, and I'm, you know I'm a big guy. I'm 6'4", two, you know, two, two, 220. And he's a little shorter guy, but he's ex-military, special forces. I wasn't special forces. You know, this whole kind of thing, right? So it was, it was weird. It wasn't as easy as it was on the telephone. But I just let it go. Again, you know, no preconceived notions, cookie cutter solutions, just created space and let it happen. So he said, all right, explain this to me. What do you got? What's so special about Stephen Kuhn? Why, you know, I said, there's nothing special about me. But what I do have is I have solutions for all three of your problems you had, and I can get you to America. Explain to me. I told him, here's a, here's a manufacturer. He's a friend of mine. This is what he can do. This is how long it's going to take. This is how much it's going to cost. But this is the revenue. He was like, whoa, really? I said, I'm not done yet. All right, then we have distrib distribution, right? That's not including what Mike is going to sell. The distribution, I forget what his name was, they believe that they can sell you into um, like 120 outlets within the next three years. You know, doors, they call them, right? In the, in the big box industry doors, like he can sell them to Walmart and Costco and all that kind of stuff, whatever the companies are. And that will bring this and this much revenue. And then the government contractor said, it's going to take a while, two to maybe three years. But when he does get it and he thinks he can move X, Y, and Z. In total, I laid in front of him in a five-minute discussion about $5 million of revenue, between, between three and $5 million of revenue for the next three years, three to five years. And he was like, holy shit, you did all that without a contract? Like, why would you do that? I said, because you don't know who these people are. <laughs> I can walk away, I'll walk away right now. You'd be in the same place you were when I, when I met you, right? So that's why I'm doing it, right? So I'm just straight up, right? And he was like, okay, well, how does this work? And I said, well, I'll send you a one-page agreement. And he's like, no, do it now. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I have cash, let's do it now. I'm like, okay, stand by. So I went across the street to my house and I'm writing this one pager up, which took five minutes, right? Because I have a template that, I'm, that you're going to get at the end of this call or per email. And I'm over there going, da, 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 da. I didn't even tell him what I was going to charge him. Right? I didn't even tell him like, huh, what am I going to charge him? 10K, should I charge 20K? Uh, eh, 20K. All right, so 20K upfront fee. The 20K upfront fee is for the introductions. That's for the introductions. If I'm going to introduce you to people who's going to make you $5 million, is it worth 20K? I think so. I mean, I, you know, I think it's too low, actually. But I asked for 20K. And then I said, um, 
I need a retainer for at least three months. Best would be five. Where I'm going to accompany the three new people and you and make sure that there's a, a, you know, sort of a synergy there so that you can move forward powerfully with a foundation of knowing each, each other's strengths and weaknesses where you can support each other. And that was 5K a month for three months. And then I said, and I need equity. So I didn't say it, but I'm writing this down in the contract, right? Then I need equity, 7.5% equity with an exit after three years at the then current evaluation when I exit as a capital event. Uh, and then the fourth thing was, I said, man, you know, if I'm gonna introduce some of these, these, these distributors and I'm introducing it to more distributors as we move forward, which will happen, I'm gonna commission on what, everything that they're selling. So I asked for 5% of the net revenue over the next three years. So that's four things. Upfront fee, 20K. Retainer, 5K for three months minimum. 7.5% equity, three-year exit. And commission out the back end, 5% over three years. Right? So I go back with this agreement. He's looking at it. He's like, okay, that's, uh, I don't know. In total, it'd be like 150, 200K that he would pay me. Right? In total, he's like, all right, let's do it. He said, I said, you said you had cash. He goes, I said, you have the 20K? He goes, yeah, I got 20K. Pay me 20K in cash right there. Right there on the spot. Signed the agreement on the spot and took off. Right? Why? Because he was like, dude, I don't, I'm done. Like, I'm good. This guy's going to take care of everything for me. I can keep doing what I do best. I can run my company here in Austria. And he, he has everybody in place that can do everything else for me. But he didn't know me from Jack, except for the friend that introduced me. Why would he do that? I'm going to go back to my thing that I said before. Certainty. Certainty. They're certain in me because I'm certain in me. You understand? If, if you hee-haw and waver when you're talking to somebody, they're going to be like, uh. But if you're honest, it's, it's, it's just like being vulnerable. There's a big thing. Men, masculinity, machoism, all this kind of stuff that men can't be vulnerable. It looks weak. Well, it is weak if you're coming from a place of weakness. Right? If you're coming from a place of strength, it's not weak. It's actually a massive strength. So when we come in a place where we don't know the answer to a question, we answer powerfully regardless. Why and how can you do that? The reason you can do that is because now you know everybody in this group. You know me. I would suggest you all exchange your emails on the edge. You know me and you know that you can always ask a question for someone who you can't solve a problem for so you can be 100% certain that you have a solution, regardless if you know it or not. And here's how you answer that question. Stephen, can you help me with this? Yes, I can help you with that. But let me get back to you with a more accurate answer with a, a couple of my team members. I want to make sure we get the best answer for you. Give me three days. Done. Right? Or you say, no, I don't know. Uh, but I can probably find somebody. Sounds different, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like passing the buck. It's not, it's not like that. You want to be involved in these deals. You want to be involved in these deals. So if I bring a marketing company in and a lead generation and, and, a, and a, um, a distribution company in, you're going to pay me for that. But I also want to be paid by them, right? Why wouldn't I? They're making money, right? You just got to be clear about that and transparent about what you're doing, right? Um, and as long as you're providing a solution that is quantifiable, and this is the key. If you say, yeah, I can solve your problems, and they'll be like, oh, great. What's that look like? Well, we're going to do this, this, that, and the other, and da, da, da. They're going to be like, okay, cool. Most people won't even realize how important quantifiable results are until they hear them for one time, for the first time. When they hear that for the first time, wait, 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 what did you say? I'm going to bring you $5 million in the next three years. How? Distribution, manufacturing, government contracting. These, these are the limits. These are the terms. These are the date, you know, all these kind of things. And like, it's just so certain. It's just like, wow, like, why wouldn't I do this? And I'm gonna tell you this, if they don't do that deal, they're brain dead. Would you pay $200,000, scrape it and scratch it together to make 5 million? I think everyone in this, in this room right now would <laughs> just a guess, right? Just a guess. And so these are the things that you got to look at when you go into, I'm not even talking about the deal. Did you, did you notice that yet? I'm not even talking about the deal at all. It's just that, uh, that agreement that we were talking about. I don't, I don't sit down and tell, okay, I want this, this, that, that, that. I don't. I write it down after I gave them the solution and they're euphoric. Like, wow, Stephen, this is amazing, man. How can I make $5 million? I'll send you the agreement. And that one-page agreement is what, you know, what, we, uh, what you're going to get. 
So once you're done with the questions and the, the person says, all right, Stephen, how do we move forward? We well, just simply say, I want to write up a simple agreement and send it over to you. It's a, it's a one pager. I raise a small upfront fee, a, a small upfront fee, a short retainer and a bit of equity. Take a look and get back to me. You're going to have it this evening. Simple as that. And you, you're done, right? So how do you structure the agreement on just one page? And here's the great part. Like I said, I have templates that make it all clear and easy for you. If you choose to join me in this, you know, in, in this, um, um, sorry, if you're with me in this session, uh, you have access to those as well. But essentially, what you're going to ask for in the agreement, what's already out written out, you just got to change the amounts and the dates and the names, is an upfront fee for the introduction to a distributor or anyone that will create value for that company. And in order for that person and your client to work together, they need someone to help them because you're the only person that knows both. So we need a retainer to bring them together and create that um, symphony of, of togetherness, so to say, right? And then, of course, um, you want to put some equity in there. So I say between 2.5% and 30%. Don't jump too high, right? I usually start at 5%. And that's depending on the solutions and the results. For instance, if their company is at 4 million, and I'm bringing in 5 million, what is that? 125% increase? Well, how much money would I take for that? How much equity would I take to do 125% increase? What's that worth to you? Right? Do you want to be in, involved in the company? I don't. I don't want to buy a job. I don't want to have equity in a company and have to work for it. I don't want that. Right? So depending on the solutions and the results that you're, you're going to get, um, you have... And, and the faith that they have in you and the certainty they have in you. Uh, when it comes to the distribution and the sales at the back end, like I said, a commission, right? That's what you want to do. You want to work, want to grab a commission. So that's four things. So it's something like this. Let's start small. 5K up front, 3K retainer for three months, 5% equity with an agreement exit after three years, and a 3% sales commission from all the distribution that's sold to the people that you introduce for the next three years. That's a total of 14K in fees. At equity, let's say you get 30K at, at, at equity, which is very low. And then 20K in commissions from the distributor. That's a total of 64K, right? Total of 64K that you would receive over the next three years, most of it up front or the half of it up front. Um, and that's coming from the example that I gave you of a 96K uplift for the distribution and the, uh, the marketing. So you're getting 64 out of 96K over three years, but that 96K is only for the first year. So in the first year, they're already a positive, net positive, even after they pay you, if they would pay you in one year, but they're not. So you have 14K in, freeze, in fees in the next three months. You have an upfront fee and you have the retainer. Awesome. Then every month for the next three years, you get that 5% or 3% commission, right? And then at the end, guess what? Three, three years are up. What's the valuation? How many shares do I have? What are they worth? Let me sell out. I had a company approach me recently <clears throat> where I own 5%. And I didn't even look at the share agreement, to tell you the truth. I mean, I looked at it, but I didn't really read it. Deep. And it was 400,000 shares, right? Was 5%. I was like, God dang, it's like diluted. But it was worth 100 grand. It was worth 100 grand. So that 5% equity that I got for, that I got paid for was worth 100 grand. And I said, and they said, do you want to sell it? I'm like, yeah. I said, three years is up in June. He goes, no, you can, we'll buy it now, but we'll, we'll, we'll pay you 80K. And I was like, all right, <laughs> let's do it. You know what I mean? It was like, it was that. It wasn't even a question for me. Like, no, I got to hold out for the 20K. No, man, that, that was free money. You want to take 80K free money? Hell yeah, I want to take 80K free money. Right? And that was, look, I'm not a genius. I'm not as like crazy businessman. I am a guy who uses my intuition. I'm a guy that can give you a solution within minutes maximum 30 minutes, right? To any problem you have. I will call people on the phone while I'm sitting with you to solve your problem. Why wouldn't I get paid for that? Why wouldn't I get paid for that? So let me put this on the speaker view. So when the recording is, I'm not very good at this stuff. So anyway, <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, so these, these are all the things that I think about when, when I'm going into, a, in, into a, a, any kind of conversation. Because like I said, if I'm on an airplane, which I've met people on an airplane, and I've made deals on airplanes. If I'm in the grocery store, I've done it. At the lounge at the airport, same thing. I've made deals with people who I've met in all of these different places. Because I'm looking for the one thing or two things that they have an issue with that I can solve. 
And there's a structure to that conversation, which I didn't tell you, I'm going to tell you now. And it's something that I've been using for years in every conversation that I have, um, even when it comes to, oh, awesome. Thank you, Malcolm. Very cool. Malcolm is on the ball. Look at that. All right. If you look in the chat, there's a contact share list. Very, very cool. So <clears throat> who's that? What I'm talking about here and I forget now. <laughs> Someone give me a heads up. What was I just saying? I just got sidetracked by that. Conversation structure. Yeah, conversation structure. There we go. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right. So conversation structure, real simple. This is this is how I find out what's going on in someone's life or their company. Five questions. But you don't ask them like rapid fire. You have a conversation with them. What's your current status? Your company or your feelings or your what mood or whatever it is, depending if I'm coaching directly or if I'm doing business advisory with coaching, right? What's your what's your status? What's what's going on right now in your life? They're gonna tell you. You're gonna say, okay, what's the major challenges you're facing right now? Right. So what are your what are your major challenges? Then you're gonna say, what have you done to try to overcome those challenges? All right. They're gonna tell you, well, we tried this, we hired a company, we did this, that, and the other. Then you're gonna say, why do you think it didn't work? Why do you think those solutions didn't work and you still have that challenge? Right. And then you're gonna say, where do you want to go from here? So what you're doing is you're getting them to fully admit to themselves and to you in a public space online, wherever you are, that they got issues. They tried to solve them. They have no freaking clue why they didn't work, but they got to get to, you know, 5 million bucks a year. What are their problems, right? Well, you, I think you know what the problems are now because they just told you. Those five questions are magic. I promise you, it doesn't matter what you do. If you have a service or, or, or a product that needs, a, is a solution for someone's problem, you ask those questions, you're going to be able to place your product or your service in a specific niche in their life and their problem and their structure and their business like you've never done before. Because even if it's the same solution that you would have done without knowing all this stuff, it's going to feel like to them, like, holy cow, like Stephen really knows what I'm looking for. Like he really has a solution for me. Why? Because I took the time to listen, allow them to articulate. And I gave back to them. This is what I understand. You have these three issues. I can help you with these three issues. Give me a day or two. Let me get back to you with some quantifiable results. Come back to some quantifiable results and say, this is what it's going to look like. They're like, wow, Jesus. Yes, please. The same thing goes for my advisory. When I talk to somebody, same questions. I'm selling my service, right? I don't even worry about the outcome. Anybody who sits with me on a call, they understand that there's value there. And that whatever it is that they need to get done, I'm going to get it done for them or with them usually, right? Because I have 100% certain, 100% certainty in my abilities, 100% certainty in my abilities to crush it, whatever it is. And so I'm not selling me again to you right now. What I'm telling you is, the structure that I that I gave you, structure that we just went through, the structures that you're going to get on the contracts are place marks, foot marks to move forward powerfully, whether you are as professional at what you want to do or not has nothing to do with that. So it's it's something that that I found was very, very powerful. And that I ended up uh, at first nervous asking for equity. But I figured if I just write it down after I provide a solution, they can, they can just say no. And they didn't say no. And there I was, right? So let's see. Let's see. So that, basically, that's the whole secret, right? The numbers I, I mentioned are all arbitrary above in the examples. I mentioned the numbers I mentioned were real about my personal ones. But I've done deals, like I said, where I've quantified $5 million in three years, and they agreed to pay all of the above. And I exited with a nice amount. It wasn't anywhere near $5 million, so they won big time, right? Excuse me, Stephen. Yeah. Can I interject really quick? Of course. Of course. Are you, I know I came in a little later, but are you um, actually looking from a screen? Are you sharing that with us? No, I'm not sure. Nope, nope, not sharing. Okay. Just talking. We're right. just talking. I'm sorry. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. I apologize. <laughs> Thank no you. No worries. This is interactive. Being as interactive as you want to be. Well, we're going okay, awesome. to get to Q&A in a second anyway. So it's, it's perfect timing. All right. Thank you. Sure thing. So um, this is easy stuff, but it's how you do anything that makes a difference. If you were to learn more, if, if, if you really want to learn more and you want to boost your wealth, uh, then talk to me personally. Maybe we can, we can work together. Maybe not. Right. 
like I said, you're going to get the templates after this call. I have a Rebecca, the, um, our, our, our admin assistant or admin director to send it out. Uh, so you can make your first deals. And these, these, these templates have literally generated hundreds of thousands of dollars for me. So you really want these. You can tweak them as you wish. Use your own language, structure, make colors and logos and whatever you want to do, right? But if you're a hard charger and you want to get into this right now, this is with a specific deal that you already have on the table, then reach out and we can work one-on-one, -on -one, all right? Whatever the, claim, whatever the case is. We can structure the deal, close your first deal um, for anybody reaching out in the next 30, 30 minutes. Um, uh, let's just say, well, I'll give you a, a good price, right? I hate doing these sales pitches, but uh, you know, I, I really want to see, I want, I want to prove to the world that this simple concept really works and anyone can do it. So if you're if you're one of those people, let me know. Let's 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 figure it out. And this is this is what I'm brought in to do. Just as an example in the M&A space, a lot of people bring me in just to do the talking. I don't look at the deal. I don't structure the deal. I don't do none of the due diligence. I don't do none of the financials. Nothing. I just talk to the person who's selling the company, or whose company that is that wants to be bought, depending on who it is. I've flown to Switzerland and other I mean, company, other companies, Switzerland was recently, other companies just to talk to somebody. I'm paid to fly there to talk to somebody, if you can believe it or not. And so these are all things that I, I hopefully was clear to you about. Again, one day I'll turn this into a course or something, but I just wanted to get it out, help everybody who's out there who's looking for, what's my product or service? How can I add value to another company with that product or service? And how can I make more than just my fee? That's basically what it breaks down to. So are you all very confused or is it very clear? <laughs> no, no. Hey, Steve, I got a question. Yeah. In regards to, um, so you, so I'm in the service industry, right? right. So if, if um, like I'm talking with a company now and I heard you speak about this a couple of weeks ago, so I'm going to approach it with them. But in regards to the companies you speak to, um, like this, uh, like they have to be around for five years. Like what's the qualifications you look for? Like what piques your ear when you're having a discussion, li listening to and hearing people speak? What's that? Oh, that's a guy I need to speak to. So what, what's that? Uh, you mean before the deal, before they need some help or just? You're talking about general yes, talk? yes. Just ge general talk and you say, oh, okay. I look for power. That guy's. I look for power. Okay. Someone who's at my level, someone who's at, at, at sort of who's going to understand my my type of uh, um, assertive power that I have when I go into a room and I talk to people. I don't do it because I want to be assertive. I just, I just am. So I, I look for someone who's going to mirror and match that because A, if you know anything about personalities, the D type, the, the dominant direct type, they will always take a challenge. Always. doesn't matter what it is. Right. And so if I'm in a conversation with one of these guys, I'm like, look, you look, you look, you look like a high roller, but we got something that, you know, that we can real, man, you know what? No, I don't want to bug you with it right now. No, what, what are you talking about? Like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> like, they want to know, like, what do you mean it's for high rollers? What, how? So it, it, isn't, it isn't NLP and it's none of that stuff. It's true um, um, connection with the person in, in, in front of me. And I always look for someone with power. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the, gotcha. the, the guy in the wall, the wallflower looking at his phone and stuff. I don't want to talk to those people. I want someone who's out there going, hey, what do you do? How, do you, how, how, how can I help you? What's the solutions that you, you, you seek? Hey, I know somebody. I, at a networking event, the first thing I do is I walk in, stop, and survey the entire room, right? Just look at the entire room. Where do I want to go? What do I want to do? And then what do I do? I move with certainty wherever I'm going. I don't like meander around, look at my phone. Geez, what am I going to do? Let me get a cocktail maybe or <laughs> okay. a weenie or something, right? I move with certainty to where I want to go. I go and I shake hands. How you doing? I'm Stephen Kuhn. Nice to meet you. Love your glasses. Oh, wow, I love that tie. But whatever it is that's, that strikes me, I move yeah. to the room, <clears> shake everybody's hand first. I don't stop and talk to someone for an hour. Go into the room, shake all the hands. Everyone's going to be like, does this guy own the plate? Is he the, is he the, 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 you know, like, who is this guy? It's just me saying hello to you. That's all it is. Walk around the room, go all the way around. I don't care if it's a hundred people. <clears throat> then you go back to the most interesting ones and you say, hey guys, thanks for the, for, uh, for the quick intro. I just like doing that when I get in here. Some people call me a politician, but I've never, I've never served. Ha ha. And boom, done. Are you already in a conversation? All right. You're already so in now you're, now you're in that conversation now. How do you see? Because he might just be in business for a year, or he might be a startup. Like, where Doesn't is matter. your point? You don't do okay. You're you're trying to pre-qualify. You can't. Oh, okay. Don't, yeah. uh, there's that. Uh, there's that outcome in my head. Okay, yeah. I got it now. Uh, okay, <laughs> no pre Okay, because uh, what happens is this. 
what happens is this, you're going to make your way around the room. You're going to talk to different groups of people. You're going to sit down, whatever you're going to do. And by the end of the night, or maybe the three quarters of the night, you're going to start seeing, you're going to start talking to people who can use the help of the person you just met over here. And you don't want anything to do with that deal because it's too small. So you say, hey, you know what? What you're talking about? And I just talked to a guy. Oh, there he is over there. I'm like, hey, George, get over here. And George comes over. I'm like, George, meet Joe. Joe has this problem. You have the solution. Why don't you guys talk? Boom. The next thing you know, you're already hooking people up in that meeting mm. to have solutions done for them and have their, have their, have their, you know, the problem solved. And people are like, who is this freaking guy? Like, who does he? Is he the organizer? Like, no, everyone thinks you run the place. And it's not because you're being arrogant, loud, brash, got a big name tag on. Hello, I'm Steven. None of that stuff. You're just going around adding value by solving problems. That's it. Again, same thing as a discussion. You do the same thing in networking. And I promise you, you walk into a room like that, boom, it's going to be like, boom. Yeah, just be careful that you don't turn assertiveness into aggression or arrogance, right? Copy that. There's a fine line. Copy that. (laughs) <laughs> all right man all right hi i have a question may i come in of course hi steven first of all thank you i appreciate your time and your knowledge and for making this such a, a low cost so i appreciate that um i particularly am in the uh educational component right now i used to be an educator specifically in alternative school settings and I figured out my value outside of the classroom. So now I've started my own program, but here's what's happening. Everybody seems to want to just work directly with me as if I'm the problem solver, but it's really all of the things that I have in place structured that either I did in the classroom or I did in after school programs. So I don't want to any longer work individually with um, either the parents only because, you know, as you can imagine, they have a lot of costs. But I want to work with the big organizations like DCF, which is um, the children and um, family support system out here in the United States. I want to work with the big, you know, decision makers in the educational components. I get to sit in the offices. I get to go into the meetings. I came into this specifically to learn the templates to change the game around and create some sort of negotiations because they obviously have the funding, but I no longer want to be the employee. And they were just coming to me all the time with everything as an employee. And I noticed that I was giving them all of the nuggets to developing the structure to either have students come into school and do better, either after school um, coordination that I would do that would implement change in their behavior or whatever it was. Long story short, I'm here to figure out the way that I am no longer the one that they come to only to work with their children, but to really set something forth in place so that I can get accommodated and paid, compensated yeah. what yeah. I'm worth. Right. Okay. Um, I would say, first of all, who's your client, right? And what's their major problem that you solve? And that's where you market. So that that's, that's the thing you always talk about. Well, who's your client? What's your problem? And what's that one thing that you can solve for them? That's what you need to talk about. Because what happens is when you go in there and you try to be everything for everybody, you're going to get nobody, right? Or you're going to be, you, 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 won't, you won't be able to scale because you have to do everything yourself. Exactly what I'm going through right now. Exactly. And I clearly noticed that there's just something that I'm doing incorrectly, or I just don't have a knowledge on something directly to be a, a key player because they're obviously coming to me as I have a key solution, but it's almost like I'm at their mercy and, and I, 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 I completely agree with you. Okay. I no, no longer want to work with the individual parents. They don't have the funding for what I want to make, right. you know? Well, you know, you just make those, um, you say, okay, great. Um, let's get five more parents together and then we'll do this. Like do it in a group or whatever. Just start saying, yeah, okay. we can do this, but I don't, you don't say, I don't offer the service anymore. You say, great, let's, you want to work together? Not a problem. Here's how it works. We need five people in a group. We meet once a week for the next eight weeks and blah, 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 whatever it is. You just start presenting as if it's already accepted. I do groups or I do virtual only, or I do it on Tuesdays with 17 people or whatever it is that you want to do. Just start presenting that as your solution. Make sure that your solution is very articulated though, right? Because if you you go in there and say, well, no, you know, I don't want to work with one person or I can't work with one person or I can't, they don't care. They don't care. What's your solution? That's all they care about. That's all they care about is your solution. If your solution is, I need five people in this group to be able to solve everybody's problem. That's how I work. Well, that's how I work. And here's a key for everybody in this room. 
I, I, I realized a long time ago that what's the one thing that ever, what's the one equalizer on the entire planet, no matter culture, age, whatever it is. One thing that everybody wants, quality of life, which is the name of my company. And of course, I always say quality of life. You know, that's my thing, right? So, and if I know that everybody around me wants quality of life, why wouldn't I try and make my, um, my goal in life to reach quality of life, to work as little as possible, to make as much as possible? It sounds funny because it was like, of course, but I'm doing it. I'm actually doing it through what I just taught you, for instance, through group programs instead of one-on-ones, through outsourcing to other coaches and all these kind of things and you know, setting up uh, automated systems and things like that. So you have multiple streams coming in all over the place, right? That should be the goal of any business person. How do I make as much money as possible working as little as possible? It, there's nothing wrong with working hard. We all do it. We've all done it. I, hell, I, hell, God knows. I had three jobs at one time for three years, three jobs for three years. Slept two hours between each job. That was it. When I first got to Germany, it was all labor jobs because I didn't, I couldn't speak the, the, the language that well at that time. But in the end, let's face it, you know, um, you can't sustain that. And, and where's the quality of life when you're living like that? I know a lot of us get addicted in our job. We love it. And man, that sense of accomplishment every time you make that big sale or crush that big deal or whatever it is, it's amazing. But why don't you replace those? achievements with personal life achievements, helping your family, helping your community, helping one person in your community rise above. And you can't do that if you don't have the time, right? You cannot do anything that you want to do all this nice and cool and make an impact and have the world legacy. You, know, you can't do that unless you have time. And this, what I just gave you, what I'm giving you, this whole thing, We'll buy you time. We'll give you time. It will allow you to have time. It's going to take you a couple years to build up that equity. But even if you do two deals in the next year and you exit in three years and 50 to 100K each, would that make you happy? You get 100K next year, 100K the year, 100K the year after, or whatever. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. You do that a couple of times, like I did 22 times, you're going to be like, holy shit, I got the next five years I'm going, you know, or whatever. All right. Does that help you a little bit? Yeah, um, as you said that, could you buy equity into nonprofits or it has to be established under something specific? Uh, you mean you, yours is a nonprofit? No, as of right now, I'm doing personal clients, okay. but I'm seeing that the evolution of children either increasing their attendance at school or behavior has been working. So what I've been seeing is more invitations from schools, DCF programs, sports or coaches that want me to integrate with them. So some of them may be nonprofits, some of them like the sports leagues, you know, they have their own different ways of making right. money. So I'm just trying to figure out how I position myself where I'm needed yeah. and allocate these templates that you're, you're gonna show yeah. us that benefit for me to maximize, like you said. Yeah, well, no, there's no, there's no equity in, in nonprofits. I wouldn't even get into that business. What you can do is be, be brought on as an advisor, right? You'd be brought on as an advisor, uh, a, a member of the board, executive board, or the premium for you know approving deals or whatever they want to call it. They have all different kind of names for them. You can be brought on as that. You say, like, for instance, when I was raising funds for um, big companies and stuff or for projects, um, there's a, you know, a fee structure in America. You have to be licensed and all this kind of stuff to, make, to, to get a finder's free from an investment and that kind of stuff. But a way to get around that was to be brought in as a CIO, chief investment officer right? On commission only um, a basis. So I have, an, I have an engagement letter. I work for them, raise the money, they pay me, I leave, right? So there's always a way that you can get through that without the equity at, the, at, at that point, because at the time I couldn't have equity in, and then you can't have equity in the nonprofits, but you can, be, you can be brought on as an advisor. Okay. That's a good one. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. All right. I see um, my buddy, Steve Griffith came on screen. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Any questions? Steve? Yeah. Um, uh, as you know, I work as a uh, introducer uh, yeah. here in the UK. Um, I've been approached by someone uh, regarding they've, they've got a oil refinery they want to, to um, sell. And they obviously come to me, answer the question, do I know anyone 
how would I, how would I, um, this is one of the reasons I've come on this call today. How would I, how would I look at that? Um, I know you said that um, to, to go to them and say, right, yeah, I may have a, a, a solution or um, someone or like a, as in a buyer. Um, how would I approach that? Um, first of all, find a buyer, talk to them if they're interested. Get an, you know, if you want an NDA, I don't sign NDAs because they're worthless, but it, sometimes it makes people feel good. Um, uh, you know, get them to um, uh, agree. Like if you find a buyer, say, hey, you're interested in this. Yes. Would you like to talk to them? Yes. Well, if you do, this is my fee. So, I mean, I just did, the right, other okay. day, I had a guy, a friend of mine, a long year friend of mine, he exited his company a few years ago for $150 million or some ridiculous amount. And he's like, like, I'm looking for funding. I'm like, you're looking for funding? <laughs> like, you, you know, why, why are you coming to me? You know, because you know everybody, right? So I told him, I said, all right, I'm going to go find some money. They're going to raise a fee, but so do I. He's like, how much? I said, so and so much. He said, no, I can't pay that. I'm like, all right, well then what do you, what can you pay? And he told me, I said, okay, I'll do that. I'll give you some equity. <laughs> so no, I raised okay. money for deals. I raised money for deals through a funding um, um, uh, arm that I work with. I have a partner in the funding space and we get equity and commission finder's fee on raising money so that, for deals on raising money for deals we're getting equity. yeah <clears throat> okay so does that work both sides in so you in my case i found a buyer um and then i, I create a deal around that and then I, I go to the guy that came to me so is that is that is that ethical no i no it's i well it's ethical if you declare it anything's ethical if you declare it, everyone agrees then it's okay but in that yeah. case i wouldn't do that in that case i would only get whoever gets the money that's where you get you where it's where you get the money from right right okay but it, it's there's nothing wrong with um suggesting to the buyer look typically i take a fee from you guys but if not just give me like 0.5 percent equity i'm happy with it they might be like you're stoned or they might say yeah you know like i have a deal right now which is ridiculous Right. And it's, it's, it's very close to fruition. Uh, let me see if I can make this as vague as possible. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm not giving anything away. It's a big deal. It's a very big deal. I'm, I'm talking like it would, this would be enough for me my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids. Right. So it's really a big deal. And I, I went in thinking like, man, I, if I can get like 10%. I'd be golden. Right. I went in with my solutions not only did I have a solution for a buyer for what they were selling, but I had a funding group that was going to fund them to build what the buyer was buying. So I had oh, three okay. cash, right? Um, they're giving me 20%. 20% profit share, right? You're like, well, that's not yeah. equity. Well, it is, it's better than equity if I have it over 25 years every month, 25%. You know what I mean? Like, like you, you always got to balance up where, where, where can I... And also, if I have 10 deal, 20 deals that are coming to fruition in the next three to six years. I want deals that come to fruition right now. So that's that monthly. That's where the commission comes in. That's where the retainers come in. That's where that front fees come in. And so it's it sounds maybe uh, um, complicated, but it's not. Steve, um, go to the buyer, say, would you buy it? Will you buy it? If you buy it, when's it gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What are you gonna pay? Da, 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 da. You go back and you say, look, I can set this up. Here's my fee, boom. And then you make the introduction and you sit back and let magic happen. Okay. You know, if you're good, you call, you you partner with people, you JV with people, <laughs> joint venture with people who do that work. It's like like I have a I have a funding partner. Um, I just send him the deals. I make the introduction, and I sit back. He does all the work, and then we split it 50 50. So he can't get deals, and I don't want to deal with funding. So I just we just came. I'm like, dude, you look like a sharp guy. Let's work together. Boom, done. Yeah. Okay. All right, brother. Yeah. Great. Thank good you. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. And you, man. Steve and I, Steve, Steve and I met in person in, in the UK at a keynote uh, a couple couple of years ago, well, last year, I guess it was. Yeah. Last year, yeah. Yeah, awesome. April. Yeah. All right, good stuff. Do we have any other questions from anyone? No one. Any deals you're working on? Any deals you're thinking about working on? I know we have a yacht. So, uh, yacht. Steve, could... yeah, Akash. So, do you want who who's the yacht deal? Do you want to go first or? What's that? Oh, uh, no. I thought I heard somebody say they wanted to speak about a yacht deal. Um, no, no, yeah, so, no. I just said we have a yacht uh, com company below. Ah, uh, saying, yeah, right. <laughs> Go ahead, Akash. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so my question is so, 
um, as you know, I'm ramping my activities back up again. Um, and so the question that I've got is, where are you finding, well, because um, you're the guy, so everyone's kind of coming to you, but for those who aren't the go-to person, what's your uh, what's your advice on sourcing? Well, the only reason I'm the go-to guy is because everybody knows me. And then the only reason they know me is because I talk to everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, it isn't like I have a system in place, right? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I just, I'm always, I, I'm omnipresent. One of the things that I do that some people don't know, but some of you do, is I host an accountability call every Wednesday for mergers and acquisition specialists. And I've been doing it for over three years now, every Wednesday for free. But like, why do you do this for free, man, for three years? It's, you know, you know how much money, I can tell you how much money I earn through this call. Because people come to me and they're like, just like you said, Akash, everyone goes to Stephen. Why do they go to me? Because they freaking see me every Wednesday. Why wouldn't they go to me? Right? So it isn't about at sourcing and I need deals and this kind of stuff. I never did that. I never did that. But if I would, I would write everybody in my contact list. Often we look over the plate that's right in front of us and look for, oh man, I need leads. I need clients. I need, and you can just look down and, oh shit, there's a whole pool of people in front of me I can talk to. What do you do? You write them and say, hey, you know, I, I, I would write Malcolm. Hey, Malcolm, how you doing, man? As you know, I'm in the mergers and acquisition space. Right now, we're doing a roll-up, which is a, a, an agglomeration sort of a, a group of companies we're buying. We're looking for companies in the marketing space that do three million a year. It's been in business for about at least three years and have an intact management team. If you could make any introductions, I'd be greatly appreciative. Thanks, brother. Done. What are you going to feel like if I, if I write you like that? Oh, awesome. And, and because you're going to be like, man, I get a chance to help Steve. That's freaking awesome. I, I, I get to feel good about something, right? And then if you do, and we and I do make a deal, then I'm gonna cut you in on that. Hey, hey, I'll be, I'll be like, you know, hey, Malcolm, just so you know, I closed that deal. And here's 5%. What? You know what I mean, like spread that, spread that love, man. Like seriously, spread that love. And so people know mm. if you work with Steve, you're getting more than fair treatment, right? It's so much fun too. It really is. It's, it's a lot of fun. I remember I had, I had a guy, <clears throat> Joel was his name. He was, uh, he has a, He's a franchise guru. This guy knows everything about franchise. He's a Navy vet. He's taller than me. He's like six, eight or something ridiculous, huge. And uh, he said, I just know he does franchises. He does like, like franchise seminars in uh, events in Dubai and Oman and all these different places. And someone asked me, do you know anybody that does franchises? I'm like, sure. Here, talk to Joel. Made an introduction. And I forgot about it. And, and like, what was it? I don't know, like last year I got this mail from Joel. He's like, hey, where, where should I transfer the 20K? I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, so-and-so bought a franchise. I'm like, who? <laughs> He's like, so-and-so. I was like, okay, sure. Transfer it here. I have no idea who he was talking about. Because I I just made the introduction on the fly. But because yeah. I'm always good to my community, I didn't have a contract with this guy because I, was, I wasn't worried about it. But he paid me anyway. Why? Because he wants to be on the good side of fate. He wants to be on the good side, right, of the world. And that's sort of where I stay. And so you create this, this, this reputation about yourself when you're always adding value by solving problems, focusing on the intention and not the outcome of someone who automatically attracts people to you. And they talk about you who attract more people who talk about you attract new people. But if you have to source, I would do it the way I just said. Sound good? So you go to you. Yeah. So it's your, your list first and then Yes. Messy. Dude, just work people who them. know and trust you are going to help you. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And from there, believe me, you're going to have enough work. If you have a, if you have 500 people in, in your contact list or 5,000 people, or like I have LinkedIn, I got like 12,000 or something on LinkedIn. That's mm -hmm. a lot of people. You know, that's, first of all, you got to write them all. And if you use an automation, you send 50 a day, how long is it going to take you? In like freaking year, right? So, you know, but once that gets rolling, you're going to have so many, you're going to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, brother. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers. Rock and roll. Any other questions? Joni, do you have a question maybe? Yeah. Any questions? I do. Uh, it's, it's Jess again, uh, uh, the adolescent, uh, whatever yeah. you want to call me. <laughs> I'm in the, all right. So as you're talking, I'm, I'm really, I'm intrigued by the energy and I'm trying to find that, that little space. So like you said, I have the parents trust I've clearly bring them value. That value is being brought to teachers. I want to figure out a way where, like you said, the advisor part, it still keeps me working. I like how you're finding your strength and you're just finding that connection. So with me having this 
powerful community connection and network that it's it's impeccable. I want to figure out how to make it work for me. So I'm thinking as you're speaking, okay, so for example, I have a, a um, right now for February school vacation, this guy has a program, it's a basketball camp. He wants me to promote to the kids, my network, you know, the families to perhaps. So, so I'm starting to think like, okay, this is where this template may be beneficial because yeah. I already have the network he wants to tap into. Exactly. So well, it's the same you. thing. It's the same thing. Okay. You, you, if, if Basically what I was going to say, start a platform where you offer different services, but don't uh, just offer them, um, you know, sort of like on a plate at a baseball game or whatever, one of those peanut sellers or whatever, you want to <laughs> have a tailored solution, right? So if you go, you go to a boy's school and say, Hey, I got a solution for you guys for the summer camp. Are you interested in hearing about it? Nice. This is what I got. I offer this, blah, 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 blah. Or you got a girl's school or you got, I don't know if they exist anymore in America, but if you got some kind of school, it's specifically for specific kind of students from whatever demographic or whatever it is, find a solution for them. <clears throat> Talk to the guy from the camp or whatever camp it is and say, Hey, how much of an up, upsell could you do for me? Sorry, a markup could you do for me for my commission? And you go back and you sell it and you just offer it. And if you have a network that's going on, they're going to keep coming back to you, keep coming back to you. You sign an agreement with these guys for three to five years saying that anybody who comes for you for repeat business, you get a commission on that too. Perfect. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. So Joanne, did you find the unmute button? I did. Hi, how are you, Steve? No, I just, uh, I, I may take a quick call with you separate. I, I'm here and I'm learning everything I can. I have a local uh, uh, magazine and the, businesses and my accounts are on a much smaller scale, but I am looking and thinking about expansion and, and even scaling my own business and what I can do and how maybe this can come into it. And sometimes I, I hear everyone talk and they talk about, you know, six figures and seven figures and I, I'm, I'm lower, but I want to expand. I have to take it all relatively speaking, you know, like now yeah. everyone's got millions and all of that. So I don't know if this fits, but I'm definitely getting something out of it. Um, and and I'll see. Maybe I can just take it and scale it down. But it's not. Good. You I can. don't. You I can. Don't, yeah. Absolutely, you can scale it down. Absolutely. I started out small. You know, okay. You can absolutely scale it down. You don't have to do all four. You can do three, two, one. Sometimes just equity, no fee. Sometimes a fee and equity. Sometimes upfront fee and commission, but no equity. You don't get everything all day. I want to figure out my Steve, my genius, and what I do well, and my passion, and 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 I'm learning so much from all of you, you know, on Clubhouse and whatever. And a lot of times they say, don't don't be married to something. I've been doing this magazine for eleven years. I built it with just a, you know a prototype, walking around, and I get, I gained people's trust. Now I want to expand maybe with different services. I, I still don't know, but I'm listening and I'm absorbing and I and I love it. I thank you for your time. And I don't know if there is a 30 minute quick thing, maybe you can there kind is. of head to that decision. There I'm is. a great salesperson too. So All right. <laughs> let's talk, man. I'd love to learn. It'd be okay. awesome. Yeah, Thanks. let's talk. Seriously. I want to put my email down here. Let's everybody gets if you want to sit with me for 30 minutes, uh, we can talk about whatever it is that you need to talk about. Hopefully it's a deal. And I promise you, you're going to walk away with, with uh, tools and steps that you can take to be immediately successful. I promise you. It's without a doubt. Whether it's me giving you a contact or introducing you to somebody or you just have an idea right then and there or whatever. So I'll make it happen. All right. So there's my email, Stephen at HumbleAlpha.com. You can grab a spot there. So Alistair, did you want to say something too? Hi. Good afternoon, Stephen. Good to see you again. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Alistair. I'm the yacht tailor. Um, no, I've learned, learned a lot. Thanks for, for sharing your your knowledge today. Um, I'll uh, look forward to seeing the templates. And um, I, I, I've got a network of super yacht owners and, and charter clients and philanthropists. So I'm constantly networking and connecting the dots and helping. And so, uh, no, it's, it's certainly sparked a few ideas and, and thoughts. So, uh, yeah, thank you again. Great. Awesome. Um, you uh, <clears throat> Are you specifically for yachts or you do like also investments and things like that? It's like, for instance, when you gain trust as someone in, a, in that sort of a field where it's sort of like a quality of life field, Sometimes they say, hey, do you know anybody in this space that sells property? Do you know anybody in this space that sells? Do you have that sort of? Yeah, the whole time. Um, I always say I'm in the relationship business. Yeah, okay, good. I happen to sell them a super yacht or, or look after their charter vacation, but they often come to me for other things, whether it's super prime real estate or private aviation or impact investment or exciting other things. So it's it's great to have a point of contact around the world in different spaces, which. Right. Um, well, yeah, let's talk. Fun. I got something for you. Okay. thanks Stephen. seriously all right man thanks so much anyone else rodney anything to say brother good to see you man yes sir good to see you as well man this is a, a wealth of information but so uh incredibly timely for me
just starting into uh, coaching and, and uh, speaking business and and uh, some of the things you were talking about, how you're connecting with people. I mean, I've been doing that for life, for my yeah. whole life. Uh, like I know, been in the city 16 years, but I know more people in business and in all areas of life than most people who live there all their life. And it's just like you. I just meet people, and uh, now now <laughs> I can see what, how that I could uh, you know make awesome. a living doing that and bringing people together people people together for for this particular reason so this is is very timely for me and uh i'm looking you know of course you know i'm a hospice chaplain right now so even in that space i mean i've i've probably um touched base with some of the richest people families in this this city and uh was able to be a blessing to them you know with no but but i you know know that there's some issues where i can connect them them to some people that may be able to help them in other areas but uh, man, don't don't make me I a pastor just never thought on it. don't don't make uh, me a pastor i mean all kinds of deals man <laughs> yeah yeah i, I, I don't want to have my own church for that particular yeah. reason because i'd be so crazy it'd be a profitable business i'd be thinking without coming mind <laughs> up. No, no not really i don't have that heart but i don't know no uh, it's it's but, um you're in a perfect place man uh exactly what you're talking about and the thing about it is to forget the outcome honest honest to goodness like the first yeah. time i remember when i was i was doing movies so we were producing films back in 2005 and six we did like we were working with like i remember tarantino's tarantino and it was whatever anyway there's a lot of like very high level mm-hmm. people we were we, we weren't even from the industry but we found a way to get money right and so it was a big deal and i'm um, standing there at this networking event right with like all these agents and whatever and producers and stuff and i'm like how the hell do you make money in this room like how do i like if i bring this this investor this producer to this film how do i make money oh you get executive you get executive producer right so like, i don't give a shit how much money do i make right well you know you get a cut of that i was like man this is bullshit man like this doesn't work there's got to be a way and i felt like i had people standing there that had contracts in their pocket if, if i introduce you to this guy sign this contract i'll introduce you to him i'm like that, that doesn't work either that's tacky right and so i backed off and i'm like how do i do this and that was it this is what i came up with like what's your problem what exactly you need i'm going to go away i'm going to solve it for you come back show it to you and if you're you're in which you probably will be then we sign an agreement and i'll make the introduction so it doesn't seem so greedy like on a spot whoosh, you know, sign a contract and you're standing there trying to connect people. Hey, Joe, it's Jim. But hey, if you guys make something, you got to pay me. It, it just it d- doesn't work. Right. You, you look cheap and tacky. So you don't want to do that. And I, I did look cheap and tacky at that time because I thought that's how you didn't do it. Because I, I was working with a veteran pro who did it and had in her pocket had contracts. I was like, no way I'm not doing that. And so it's it's all about adding value by solving the problem. Right. And I, I would bet, venture to bet Alistair is really good at this because he can't go out there and just drop a bomb, right? You have to be able to fulfill all of their wishes, right? All of their wishes before you even talk about it. I get it, man. I get it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I do want to do is start going to schools and speaking because uh, a lot of schools, they're, they're, they're struggling, man, because they, they have a bunch of kids that's in there that's in uncontrollable and they just really need love and they need some direction and, and the teachers and everything they don't have the time to do it you know what i mean but I, of course i do that just you know solve that problem for for Did you uh, have you talked to dale vincent hancock no he's on clubhouse um occasionally he's a child confidence coach in the uk he can't even mm-hmm. he can't st- he can't get it he doesn't have any time in his life to not speak he's booked in every school across the uk and and, and internationally about exactly what you're talking about there. Okay. Talk to him, That's man. Dale Talk to Vincent. Him. Dale Vincent Hancock. He's on my friend's list on Instagram, okay. for instance. Yeah. Okay, I'll hey, talking. excuse me, Rodney. Um, what yeah. city are you in? I'm in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, about an hour and a half uh, east of Pittsburgh. All right. I'm in Massachusetts. Can we connect? Sure, definitely. My information is in the, in the... Yeah, definitely. We can do that. All right. Rodney, TM, great to see you, man. Steven, this has been great, my man. All right. TM, thanks for, thanks for chiming in. <laughs> America's uh, favorite coach, TM Hyman. If you don't know him, look out for him. He's an awesome dude. Really uh, helped me out. All right. Tabitha, did you want to say something? Hey, I had it running in the background. I was I had to run a workout, and I'm like, I don't want to. So I had it running in the background. Um, I'll have to 
watch a lot of it, but I'm sure I'll be talking with you. So okay. thanks for the opportunity. Sorry, I wasn't more interactive. No, all good. All good. All right. So any other questions from anyone? If not, we're going to shut her down. Any thoughts? Any questions? Any wishes once or not? Uh, uh, you know what? Just mention everyone the contact sheet there that, that's set up. So there's a contact um, sheet that Malcolm filled out. It's a doc, Google Doc sheet. If you click on it, it's in the chat on the right-hand oh. side. Yeah. If you're on the Yeah, what I'll do is I'll keep it there for a week and then, you know, make copies, put it into your format, and I'll just knock it that, you know, cut off the share. Malcolm on the ball. I love it, man. All right. Taking, taking the initiative, yep. brother, adding value. All right. Does everybody have the link or someone still need it? Uh, yeah, I'm just getting it. Okay, great. Just click on it, open up a new window, add your add your, your information after we're done here. All right. Steven, Steven, are we getting the uh, uh, link to the recording as well? Yes, you'll get the recording and you get the link to the recording and you'll get the uh, the two templates. Great. Oh, yeah. Add the link to the Google Sheet too when you do that. Okay, I'll do that. Let me open the Google Sheet then before I forget. Otherwise, I won't even have it. <laughs> You're on there. It's been great, man. Thank you so much. All right. Awesome, guys. Charles, thank you so much. <clears throat> Janie, did you want to say something real quick or are you just saying hello? Oh, um, um, I, I just got my question answered about the um, uh, Google Sheet. So okay, great. I, I got that and put my details on there and go from there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll speak thank soon. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, yep. indeed. Give me Thanks, a holler. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. Give me Thanks. a holler. Thanks, Stephen. Thank, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, thank you, Steven. Thank you thank Steven. You. All the love, right. Stephen. Bye bye. Much love. Take care. Bye. Welcome. <laughs> Thank Ciao, you. Sir. Bye. Yeah.